well. So, um, other than that, Kevin Sally. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, for, look, for, for those that don't uh, know Sally Garrett, Sally Garrett sitting here on my right is the program manager within council from Transformation, who will be, who um, if the program goes ahead as proposed here, will be playing a significant role to really pull the pieces together. Um, Look, I'll, I'll take it the report has been read, but what if I can do is just sort of um, summarise some of the key component pieces, the structure of what the review is about. Um, um, so starting with the, the fundamental notion of a requirement here. So we do have 17A. Um, it was an amendment to the Local Government Act, which does require the Council to undertake a review. Um, and the notion of that review is the cost effectiveness of current arrangements. It does go on to talk about the, nodes of the, of the, the, the needs of the communities within the region, good quality local infrastructure, regulatory services <coughs> and how local public services are delivered. So quite wide reaching by nature. Um, what's quite clear is that it is strategic in nature though. It is not an operational review in any means. It's not a case of going into individual organisations, departments or units. It's actually a strategic review of the effectiveness of the cost of the, the cost effectiveness of the um, services being delivered. And that covers three key components, which is the governance aspects, the funding and the fundamental delivery of services. Um, I mentioned services as the phrase. Um, this is not a review of entities or departments. It is use, utilising the groups of activities and the themes coming through the, the long-term plan. <coughs> the notion is it's actually the services being delivered to our communities as opposed to who's actually delivering them. Who's delivering them becomes a secondary component of the review itself. <coughs> um, and they will become part of that and those parties will be involved in the review naturally. Um, the notion of cost effectiveness, um, the scope uh, of this review fundamentally is on the nature of cost effectiveness, but an interpretation of that is really a value for money notion. And that's really the approach we'll be taking here. It is, is the, the value for money being delivered through those services. It's a, a fundamental concept that being the cost effectiveness of those. Um, it's evidentially based. The notion of this review will be to collect information, factual information on which to compare the cost effectiveness of those services. So I'll be comparing it to, to um, peers, to benchmarks, to try and get some comparative in there. Key concept is that it's actually evidentially based, so that is how the actual recommendations coming back to the committee will be based. It'll be actually <coughs> solutioning and high level recommendations on that evidence. Um, look, as you'll be aware, um, ultimately the, the Mayor has a responsibility for driving the accountability review and other aspects of this organisation at the highest level. Um, the, this committee has been mandated with oversight of the 17A review, which is a legal requirement. Um, what this paper is proposing is that we do look at setting up an oversight steering group. Um, and what the recommendation is here, as you just, as you just heard, is, is C on the recommendation is the chair, deputy chair of this committee, the chair of the uh, Environment and Community Committee, and the chair of the Planning Committee, as well as the chair of the Independent Nari Strategy Board becomes that oversight committee to actually give the guidance as the, as the review progresses. <coughs> um, priorities, look, the, the notion is that this is a full review across all the services delivered across the group. Um, that's obviously going to take some time. So over a, a approximately a three-year time frame, we're looking at completing those reviews, setting some priorities as to which should come first, as within the body of that document. We do look at the scale of the spend. We do look at the notion of how it will... Um, feed into quality information for the long-term plan process. It looks at the potential cost effectiveness that may be changes that may result from the review and, and several other factors such as public policy. <coughs> That's actually what we have then suggested is based on those criteria and others, it's, it's leading to the four priorities identified within your report. And very quickly, three waters, domestic waste. Um, the operational support and then using um, a rolling program, setting communication engagement is the first of those. Uh, and then investment attractions and global partnerships are the first four um, cabs or rank in effect. Um, part of that, part of that uh, determination was also on the basis of what's actually manageable for a workload perspective, and the notion was one large, one medium, and a couple of smaller reviews at any one point in time is quite realistic. Um, pertinent is the comment that was made in a previous item around the notion of how this will be undertaken. The intent here is to have a small internal program group to actually run the program, to actually uh, be responsible for the collection of the information. But what is recognised, it does need an aspect of independence. So the notion is a panel of independent experts relevant to the various, SBS, uh, various areas being reviewed who can actually uh, assist with the development of the terms of reference, 
can actually challenge the questions, that make sure that the scope of the reviews, the nature of how it's being undertaken, and the ultimately the recommendations coming through are of, of high enough quality to bring back through the oversight group and then ultimately back to this committee for some, some recommendations to be heard. Um, so look, I think that's a relatively brief summary of what the process is about. Uh, happy to, to take any questions on that. Or um, council, councillors, I know there was concern among some councillors that despite the terminology value for money, this was going to be a narrow sort of um, monetary based sort of investigation. So just to, just to look in um, opening assumptions, which is 13 and the second point down, just to be quite clear that everyone understands they're concerned with value of money in a broad sense, how well the existing policy and institutional arrangement deliver on council's strategic objectives and outcomes. This extends beyond the legislative requirement to look at cost efficiency efficiency, effectiveness and appropriateness. So it, is a, it isn't a narrow based, and <coughs> Kevin, you can just confirm that to councillors. Yeah, look, yeah, it, it, it's, it's value for money in the context of what we've seen significant under review, uh, reviews undertaken throughout New Zealand, through the UK, um, even Auckland Transport has undertaken one a couple of years ago. The value for money concept, it is, it's cost efficiencies are a component piece of that, but ultimately it's about the effectiveness and delivering the outcomes you're trying to achieve. <coughs> So I'm happy to move this, and I'm just asking for a seconder. Yep. I moved off, thank you. And we've got Councillor Wayne Walker and then Councillor Sayers. Mm. Yeah, um, first off, just a, a question around um, waste. Um, domestic waste review, is, is, that, um, <coughs> is that just household waste as compared to waste generally? Yes. Okay, in that sense, I'd, um, I, I'd just have, um, an issue around that. Um, from my perspective, the, the matter of waste generally is quite applicable, especially as it goes to the waste levy, um, which is a levy that applies to all waste, for example, not just domestic waste. And that is a very significant, um, severely underutilised um, funding tool that we have at this point. So I just have a question mark there around why, why just domestic waste? Um, yeah, look, yeah, through the chair. Um, look, domestic waste is, is uh, highly relevant right now with the rollout of the waste minimisation and, and management plan. Um, the notion of what's um, industrial or commercial waste, there's limited scope council currently has in that area. It's, it's quite varied across the region. When we work through the program in more detail, we actually scope out the full terms of reference for the subsequent items that may well be added back in there, and that will be one of the discussions we have back through the oversight group. So what does that mean, Kevin? The initial review is proposed is to start with domestic waste. It may well be that commercial, industrial and others are added later on as we work our way through the program. As part of the review process? As part of the overall review process, yes, not just one of the first four priorities. I, I think my particular concern is around the matter of the waste levy yep. and that that be an implicit part of any review. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Councillor Sayers. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just one question. I guess firstly, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to congratulate you on bringing this um, item to the, to, to, to the committee. I think ratepayers are very, very will be very interested in the value for money they're getting. And I think, as you've spoken to me privately, Mr. Mayor, no, we won't um, pre-guess the outcomes of this. We'll just see see what it distills from it. Um, and it could be value for money. Maybe there's cost savings in it as well. Let's, let's wait and see. But my, my question is just around, I was trying to get in before you moved the motion, uh, Mr. Chair, was around the uh, perhaps the non-involvement or if the Audit and Risk Committee could be involved in this process, mainly because of the mandate uh, within that committee, which mentions a few things like monitoring of compliance its purpose, no? Um, monitoring of compliance with the laws and regulations of the statutory requirements, significant projects focusing on the appropriateness of risk, and probably this is this that could fall in hands financially, perhaps, or value for money wise, and particularly oversight of, uh, of um, preparation of the LTP and the annual plans and other external financial report, report, reports required by statute. And I think this is required by statute. So I'm just wanting to flag Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, if there's a possibility as myself as the deputy on the Audit and Risk Committee and therefore the senior politician on that because it's chaired by an independent uh, of the possibility of being involved in both the, um, 
both recommendations B and C in terms of appointing who these independent people are and working up the terms of reference. Um, just wondered if somebody could answer that question, if that's a possibility, because I'd be very keen to do it. Uh, I would, I don't know, wouldn't the audit committee be reviewing this later? I, I was, you know, if I could just mention through the chair, I think I've heard sort of two aspects to that. One is the actual chair of the committee being involved in these two, the, the actual oversight committee and the terms of reference discussions. The other is the actual audit and risk committee being involved in the review itself. Um, I think you're right. I think that we, we, will, we should take an item to the Audit and Risk Committee in due course about any risks identified through this process <coughs> and the fact that we are meeting legislative requirements. Um, so the second one, I think, we don't want to duplicate roles. Um, as far as the first one goes with, the, the, with a member of that committee involved, that's potentially up to, to people here today if you'd like to expand <coughs> that oversight committee. I guess, I'm just, um, Mr Chair, I'm just floating that because I have an interest as the, as the Deputy Mayor. As, uh, um, as the, uh, the, my fellow councillors would know that's actually chaired by an independent person, not a councillor. So, um, and as deputy, maybe I'm the appropriate <coughs> person to do it in terms of the political uh, oversight. Oh, there's quite a few here. So, uh, I, I, we I are the we are the oversight. I mean, basically, the audit committee reports to this committee. It's um, <coughs> and we're starting to load it up. Mm. Well, it's at your discretion, Ross, because you've, you've moved it and it's been seconded, but um, I'm just feeling I'd be very keen to do it and would appreciate being on it. <coughs> so we'll come back to that. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. Point, okay. of order, point of order, Mr Chair. I mean, didn't Councillor Sayers just seek an amendment to include himself on that? It's no, not up to you to judge no, it. No, he, he just said to me, it's up to me to think about well, it. That was his last comment. And I said, we'll come back to that. I could move an amendment later, but I'm trying to avoid it, I guess, Ross. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Oh, sorry, I was just going to speak to that. If it ca yep. ca can, can, that's yep. okay. Yeah, no, I was just thinking in um, uh, in terms of the uh, composition of that committee. Obviously, uh, we have all the chairs and and, and their deputies, which which is uh, which is fine. Um, I just think in terms of the balance of the councillors, that that the presence in of uh, someone like Councillor Sayers would perhaps um, you know. Uh, um, in some way ac ac accommodate the lesser lights, if I can uh, put it that way, or, and especially in light of the fact that you've shown an interest in that. So I, 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 yeah. I think it's a reasonable request in those circumstances, and, and, it, and it just That's does tie in. There's a degree of uh, uh, synchronicity with, with, the, with the committee that he's deputy chair of now that we don't have a, a, a council actually chairing that committee. So I think that's... Uh, that's a fair point to make. So I, I'm just really speaking in, in favour of that suggestion. I don't think that's uh, a huge imposition or, or on anything. In fact, it's, there's a certain degree of logic behind it, I think. In the spirit of synchronicity, I think that's a police song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we will, uh, Showing your age, Mr Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> we will add, um, uh, the, and we'll specify the Deputy Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee. Okay. Right, great. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> Can you have a specific All right, question? Daniel. No, okay. This is only to see, this specific. is for the establishment yeah, yeah. of the steering group, isn't it? Specific person. It's my understanding. <laughs> well, what about Mike Lee? Because that's all, sorry, I've had a request from specific Member Tybury and he to go on to see, to be as on the establishment of the steering group. So I'm sort of, what I'm saying is I think this is appropriate in item C. Well, certainly item C, and uh, perhaps, Ross, well, could I ask just why not item B as well? Well, I, I just, I'm sorry, if you look at that, it's just starting to really get loaded up on, on item B. Well, you can step B. down, he can take his place. We don't have the Deputy Mayor on there, or the... You've got, the chairs, of, you got the, the chairs of the affected CCOs and the mayoral office. I mean, honestly, we'll need a, need a very large room. Yeah. Not too large, we've got a few of those. <laughs> are we, are we going on to discussion, Mr Chairman? Sorry? Are we just doing questions or discussion? No questions. <laughs> Councillor Hulse and then Mayor Goff. Oh, I've got discussion rather than questions. So my question is one that's sort of been troubling me a little bit with this, and I, I've heard the presentation and I, I understand this is normal process, and you know we've all been around long enough to understand exactly what a 17A review does. It's normally done by staff. So this is a normal 
process that councils do? Is the vehicle fit for purpose? Are we getting the right work done by the right people for the right price is kind of fairly standard when we let out new contracts, when we change what we're doing. This is kind of a little bit half and half, and this is the bit yeah. I'm trying to understand. So is this, if this is a normal 17A review process that we're required to do by legislation by a certain time, we're making a meal of it. Yep. If this is, and I, I understood we were doing the 17A review, we now have the mayor's sort of making some points or being acknowledged. I don't even know if the mayor said it. I don't think he has, but he's sort of been acknowledged in the media for driving this and, you know, giving the council to shake up and saving billions of dollars and all the rest of it. So I think that's probably hyperbole from the media. But it does, this is either driven by the mayor as a cost-saving review and it's political, <coughs> or it's performed by the staff as part of a normal 17A review process. And I, I can't actually work out where one starts and the other finishes. So I probably am sitting here a little bit uncomfortable about this, and I don't want to direct <coughs> my questions to at, at the staff at this stage. I think probably the most useful thing I can do, Mr Chair, is actually talk about this as we go into structuring this review. So I, I will leave that question hanging for the moment, unless someone's prepared <coughs> to tackle that. It's driven, by, driven by the legislation, but it's driven by off. legislation. Yeah. It's <coughs> just an unusual process. Mm. <coughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I can perhaps start by addressing uh, Councillor Hulse's uh, queries. There's, there's two things. One, <coughs> this is not driven as a cost-cutting <coughs> exercise. A value-for-money exercise <coughs> is different from a cost-cutting exercise. A value-for-money looks at the nature of the service, whether it's being delivered according to best practice and whether it's achieving the outcomes that Aucklanders want. It may be that the outcome of some of these reviews say, you know, might be looking at resource consent, saying uh, these have increased incredibly, uh, our process is too slow, we've got to spend more money. So you can't make the assumption that it's about cost cutting. It is about value for money, the quality of our expenditure. The second thing is, <coughs> Whenever we set up a committee to review our own performance, people outside of us say, you are judge and jury in your own cause. I think, just as we have done in the last paper, uh, we've got to have a degree of independence in the uh, value for money uh, exercise that we're undertaking under 17A. Can I talk about why I think it's, it's so important? I think it's critically important because I think there is no more fundamental obligation on us as elected representatives or as professional staff than to be able to eyeball our constituents and say, we are confident that we are providing the best possible service at the most reasonable cost because that is, that is what you've elected us to do. All of us have been through a campaign and we heard that repeatedly. So the first thing that this exercise is designed to do is to provide some reassurance and confidence in the public that we are taking value for money and cost effectiveness seriously. The second thing is just as important. In my last two meetings with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance, they both put to me exactly what I expected them to put to me. They said, you've come down to see us and you want more money. How can you persuade us that what you've got you're using effectively? And I took them through all of the all of the material we've got that we've kept our, <coughs> um, our, our costs, internal costs, down to about 1.1% Sue, and the real blowout in cost is uh, in terms of interest and in terms of depreciation. I talked about the Section 17A reviews that we were taking seriously and applying consistently, not only across the parent council, but across the CCOs. We've had dozens of debates around this table that the CCOs are funded by us and therefore they need to be accountable to us. And when we did the accountability exercise uh, in committee, we talked about the need to use this as an instrument. When I wrote <laughs> with letters of expectation to the CCOs, I specifically put in my letter of expectation to every CCO that we would be implementing a Section 17A review. Section 17A, is very clear in what it says uh, in terms of the legal obligation on us to do it 
and empowering us to do it in relation to the CCOs. CCOs are spending public money, the, council, uh, the, the parent council group is spending money, the, the obligation of accountability and value for money should apply across both of them. So I want to be able to go down when I thump on the table to the Prime Minister or the Minister of Finance and say, we are doing everything we can to get our house in order. If we waste money, that's money that's not available for valuable tasks that we should be carrying out. Every one of us around this table should have a vested interest in, in holding the organisations accountable for giving us value for money outcome. It's a basic requirement on us and that is what this review is fundamentally about. Councillor Darby, do you have a, any, do you have any comment? Uh, sorry, as chair of the I'm not finished. planning committee. So I'm not, sorry, I'm not, I'm not finished. Oh, sorry. I, was, oh, so sorry. I, so sorry. I, I, had, several, <laughs> I had several <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay. So, and, I, I, and thank you. I think the mayor's clarified, well, he's clarified in my mind that this is a bit of a, a, a a confused process. So, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't wish to kind of cross question you, and I, I need to state very clearly my absolute support for, for doing this work. However, I think we're giving mixed messages. We're either reviewing our CCOs or we're doing a 17A report on some of our council services. I'm hearing from our staff 17A report on some of our council services, like waste, like water. So I think we just need to be a little bit more clear as we move into doing this work. A 17-hour review of some of these council functions is a very good and useful one, and I'd endorse them. I will, however, be raising some of my concerns shortly about waste. But a full review of CCOs is a different process. We had a once-over lightly um, a couple of years ago, and I was the only person who supported and um, voted for a major relook at the governance around water care. That did not endure me to water care, and no love is lost between us. But people were, councillors were very reluctant to take a very hard look at our CCOs. So, Mr. Mayor, you would have my absolute 100% support if we were doing a proper review with external parties on the CCO structure which the government gave us that we're trying to make work and it's very, very hard to make it work in its current form. The bit that I'm now confused about is that we're getting very high level external people to review our waste, really, when we're halfway through our waste process. We're reviewing waste as we speak and if you take a value for money um, approach or lens to whether we recycle, you'd have to say, well, that costs us money. An organic food waste, that costs us money. But these are critical to our ratepayers being able to afford to live in our city and afford the rates they spend and to be able to wrangle the volume of rubbish that they produce. So I think <coughs> we've, we've got a few mixed messages going on here that I, I'm hoping if the committee doesn't <coughs> sort of become a committee of the entire organisation, that we can actually resolve some of this confusion through this process, because at the moment, I think we are trying to do half of two different things, and we are going to make a shambles of it. But mm -hmm. I think the intent is useful, the intent is good, but I think we need a good hard look at what we're trying to do. So my question is, can we separate out what belongs a review of CCOs, what belongs in a review of our council functions. Because we've crossed the two of them over, we're actually going to get a half-assed result. So can uh, they be split out? Chair, uh, can, can I comment on that one as well? Okay. Well, if, first of all, this is not a review of the CCO structure. This is a review of services yes. delivering, uh, or services being delivered, by both CCOs and council proper. It is not, uh, I'm not revisiting the CCO structure. It may be, councillor, that that's a good thing to do uh, at, at some point, but that's not what we're doing here. And we are not talking, um, you know, to use your waste example, uh, we're not talking simply about money. We're talking about what that money delivers in terms of outcomes and services to the population. It is not a narrow review about how can we cut money it's about how can we be sure that the way that we are spending money is giving a good outcome 
to our residents and ratepayers for the funding that they provide to council. So does that clarify those, those two points for you? If I can just answer, and thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I, I haven't spoken today, Mr Chair, and you'll be relieved that I probably won't speak again. But the, the reality for me, and using waste, which is an issue that is critical and mm. pertinent to our community at the moment, until we're very clear about the outcomes we want to achieve, which is around zero waste, is around social outcomes, and is around saving money for our ratepayers over the long term. We're, these are mentioned in the report, and I'm very glad to see them here. But we need to actually work out in the first instance, and maybe this is the terms of reference discussion, that we need to endorse that those are the outcomes we wish to achieve. And if the waste is, domestic waste collection is reviewed through that lens, then that's a good process. But my concern is that given the fact that we're going through some extremely complex unwinding yep. and revisiting of, of contracts within the waste the um, series, I, I, I struggle to see how we can make huge change. So again, the reason why I raise a concern is this is normally done internally. We are going through a review of the whole system. I don't think it dignifies or it, it necessitates a large and expensive process to review something that is in a state of flux at the moment. And my final concern I'll raise is when you look at benchmarking, are we benchmarking against Brisbane? Are we benchmarking against Seattle? Are we benchmarking against Timaru? Because in the New Zealand context, there is no one else like us. There's no other city. You know, Wellington doesn't have the Gulf Islands that we pay a fortune to, talking of value for money. You know, we subsidise the hell out of collecting waste in the Gulf Islands, and that's maybe the right thing to do. But, you know, when you take a 17A lens over that, that's a fairly questionable way to do business. So benchmarking, are we, who are we looking at benchmarking ourselves against? We should take this offline, Peter. Kevin, and to talk to each other about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, I, if, yeah, if I can, just through the chair, just those three points, just to hopefully elaborate a wee bit on those. The first one, and as the Mayor said, this is not a CCO review. It is a review of the themes and the group's activities within our LTP. And what we do is we then look at that service. One of the questions we have is, where is it being delivered? Who is delivering it for us? If it's a CCO, if it's council, if it's a combination, that will come out in the discussion. That becomes part of the governance review piece. Um, as far as waste goes, in no way will this review be reassessing the waste management minimisation plan. Plans, strategies determined by organisations within the group stand. This is about how are they governed, delivered and funded. So this is actually saying, are they, is that strategy, which a lot of work's gone into to actually develop, and they're currently rolling it out in the program, is it now being rolled out? Is it being <coughs> governed, funded and delivered in the most cost effective and most value for money approach? So it's not going to reassess the strategy in any way. That stands. The third piece, benchmarking. Look, all benchmarking is a useful input to a process. Very seldom can you actually get a benchmark and compare it directly to another entity and say, is it above, is it below, that's telling you something. In almost all cases, benchmarking becomes a contributing factor for your discussion, which is what we need some of those experts to do in the panels that are actually in, are more involved in some of these industries to actually guide us <coughs> what may be differences here. We'll definitely be using the internal staff and the CCO staff as well to help inform that process. But no, this will not be a, here's a benchmark, compare us to it, if we're above or below, that's decided. Contributing factor. That's it. Thank you. That answers it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Holtz, um, please don't carry out your threat because uh, your contributions are among the more valued around this table. <laughs> Councillor Newman. You're assigning judgment as to the value, are you, Mr. Chair? <laughs> <laughs> value added. <laughs> yep, that's correct. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll leave him out. Um, I have a couple of questions regarding the report. Um, and then I, I, I reserve my right to speak. So, if you read Section 17A of the Act, um, it provides for um, what we must do. We must review the cost effectiveness of the current arrangements. But Section 17A3B says if a current, if a local authority is satisfied with the potential benefits of undertaking a review in relation to that infrastructure service or regulatory function do not justify the costs undertaking of undertaking a review. So am I to understand that you, having made that assessment, judge that it is 
more cost effective to do, undertake these reviews in these four areas to start? Is your assessment from the get go that there is value in doing this exercise in these four areas? Yep, and um, yeah, through the chair, please use the word value in doing these because as the mayor has stated, this is not necessarily going to lead to a cost reduction. The cost effectiveness of doing the review will be actually to be to ascertain that the, actu the way we are currently delivering those services through certain entities is delivering the value we would expect and achieving <coughs> the outcomes we're seeking. Not it will not be a return on the dollar in all cases. Some that may be a product of some of the reviews, but that's not the driver here. So the value warrants the cost of doing the review. Yes, that's the, the assessment we've made. Okay, now I can understand the the value proposition for the three waters review. I can absolutely see that. Very big substantial issues and the centralistness with the combined network can see that. Um, I'm actually with Councillor Hulse, so I'm concerned about the domestic waste review. The organisational support review is, so am I to let understand based on the report that you are really hanging this on the EY report that was presented in late 2015 in the comments around Shared services? Not solely. It's a con it's a con again, it's a contributing piece that suggests that there could be more cost-effective way of running it, but it's only one factor. It's also what is the actual and the communication engagement, the first, the first component of that. Are we actually communicating most effectively to our public? Are we explaining the, the, the actual outcomes that the organisation as a whole, which is the group, is trying to achieve? Is that messaging being consistently applied and actually being undertaken appropriately? So the value that we're receiving through that aspect is also part of this review. So no, not just cost-effective. At para 21, second bullet point, you refer to the EY report. Yep. Do you agree with the analysis of the EY report in relation to shared service, uh, shared back office functions? Because the Auditor General didn't. The, the fact that the report has noted that is something that we wish we think we seriously have to consider as part of a 17A review, yes. Um, I have... Sorry, um, Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, through the Chair, if I may add to Kevin's response and just... Uh, for the purpose of clarification, the 10% um, estimated annual operating cost saving that was in the EY um, report um, was based on a, a general assessment that they made of if you put a shared service environment into any organisation of the size and scale such as Auckland Council is that you should expect a minimum of a 10% reduction in your operating costs. So I'd just like to offer that for context. Thank you, Chair. Can I um, just follow up with one further question, reserving my right to speak? So what, what is going to be, uh, what's your start of the 10 estimate of cost of this review exercise? We, we do not know the full cost yet. What, would, what we do know is between now and 30 June, we'll have to meet those costs from the existing budgets. It's, this is not a large scale, let's go and actually outsource to get a full review done, done by other parties. So until we actually work out who the panel members may be, until we actually work out the full terms of reference and bring that through that group, um, then we can actually quantify some costs and come back to this group as part of the budgeting process. You're having to absorb the costs internally for a period of time. What, what doesn't happen as a result of trying to meet these costs through an, uh, you know, internal efficiencies. This, this, this ties back to a couple of questions we've already had, which is the fundamental notion, although this is new, it's not new. 17A is a formal structured process to review the cost effectiveness of services delivered by a group such as ours. We do that anyway. So we, as you know full well, we've had the ICT review, Project Aura, we've had um, reviews through the customer services area, un reviews of undertaking about how we're delivering services as we speak. So we have resources available to try and actually earmark towards this particular project, we'll do that. If the costs end up being slightly more than we can do through existing staff, we will somehow have to try and absorb that this year for the remaining three months of the year, it's not a long period. Somehow we'll have to do that. What we do need to do though is quantify that through the oversight committee with the terms of reference and who the panel members may be, have those agreed, then we'll get a more accurate costing for subsequent of 1 July onwards and we can come back to the oversight group and then this committee if it requires a budget request. Reserve my right to speak. Mm. Councillor Corky, you have a question? Yeah, um, just have a, a question or two around um, scope. It, it goes to the, the revenue collection side as, as much and all as the efficiency of the spending. So I touched on the importance of the waste levy, for example, as it applies to weight. Equally, uh, around stormwater, 
there's the possibility you could charge around impermeable surfaces, ser services. A and these sorts of issues go to getting money, um, alternative sources of finance, which are, are critical. So I'm making the assumption that in instances where uh, there are those possibilities that the scope of, uh, of what we're looking at here will overlap with that. Similarly, uh, in instances of strategy where we don't have a strategy, for example, we don't have a water strategy, um, we would indicate that as, as part of the, the scope of this exercise. And in an instance where we're only part way through something, for example, we're only part way through our delivery of our waste plan, and in particular I'm referring to um, organics, I would hope that we don't get into some review around that because we don't know precisely what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I share some of the concerns that Councillor Hulse has raised uh, <coughs> around, uh, around this. Relatively briefly, the, on the revenue side, yes, part of the governance, delivery of, and funding of may well come up with some suggestions as to how it may be more appropriate to fund a service. That would then naturally come back through the long-term plan process or annual plan. You have the revenue and financing policy, which says how will an activity be paid for. That will also come back through this committee as part of that discussion. So what we'd believe is this review potentially come with some recommendations about alternate sourcing, if it's appropriate, which would then be considered in the wider context of how you're actually um, levying, charging, rating um, the public. And there's one very short question I would ask that I know Councillor Casey would raise if she were here, and that goes to shared services um, of a sort, and that's around branding and the, the lack of the consistent Auckland Council brand, Auckland brand across, frankly, everything we do. So I'll just leave that with you. We hear what you say. That was Councillor... Casey speaker. Yes, it does. <laughs> She'll be watching. Hello. <coughs> <laughs> uh, may you get well soon. Um, Councillor Dudley, please. Thanks, Chair. Oh, look, um, I, I totally support this initiative. Um, I was not aware of Section 17A of the Local Government Act until uh, this popped up, so uh, hats off to those that spotted it. Um, the, the section, when you look at that section, the, the, the um, the legislation under 17A, um, and it's, uh, I think it's outlined in attachment C. No, I was referring to something else there. No. Um, what, one of the things that it says there is that um, if you've got a contract which you can't, cannot alter in the next two years, it, it, does, it says that you should not review. Mm. So the one area that I thought we'd entered into pretty long contracts on was the waste collection. So are we consistent with the legislation highlighting a review of domestic waste collection? Mm. Look, it, it's an interesting component piece because yeah, fundamentally what it says is yeah, if we have those contracts in place, but really contracts is a component piece of it. We can still explore the notion of how is it going to be funded, uh, what is the government structure around it, without actually changing the fact that the contracts have been let and are being, being rolled out across the, the region. Yep, but it, it, you could take an interpretation that if purely that's the only driver for the discussion, it could be left out. The fact is, though, on a rolling basis, we would have to review all the services anyway. But it, but it basically says here that where you've got a binding contract such that it cannot reasonably al be altered within the following two years, it's, 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 it's excluding that category. Uh, no, no, it, it it's says, it's sorry, it, if I can... Yeah. Through you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, it says a local authority is not required to undertake it if that's the case. So it doesn't prevent you from undertaking it, but it doesn't require you to undertake it. It's, it's, it's enabling, but not requiring. Okay, good point. That's Thank helpful. You. So we're saying that we're not required, but we're identifying that over others in the program. So if that's the case, what are the reasons? We've so got requirements under 17A? Well, with, yeah, and without going through the legalese of all the wording, that actual clause as well is referring to the whole aspect of how the service is delivered, governed and funded. Are we contractually or legally bound to all of those aspects for the next two years? In the case of there, we've actually looked at the delivery has been contracted out as to how waste management will be delivered, but not necessarily how it will be funded or, or how it's been governed. Okay. And Mr Chair... These resolutions, they are endorsing the program, not just the first stage, it's endorsing the program. Is, is that how we read it? 
the program is outlined in attachment C. It is the program. So this is an ongoing body of work starting Three with Three years. these. Um, but we don't at this stage have an indication of the program costs, the full program costs. So it's only after we start exploring the makeup of the panel and those that might be undertaking this work uh, when we will get an idea of the costs. Yes. That, that's where we'll come back with an estimate of the true cost of the whole program, allowing for the fact that there were legals implied to undertake the review. So we will come back to those the, the costings and let you know just what that is going to cost and whether we proceed on the same basis or whether we wish to, to address their approach. Thank you. And I notice um, one of the priorities we're identifying is um, investment attractions and global partnerships, but attachment C talks about what we could roughly call economic growth and visitor economy. It's, it's been retitled. Is it the same? Because my view would be we need to review the whole of that ED area rather than a part of it. Can you just <coughs> confirm that it's the yep. same? Yeah, uh, no, it's not. They're actually two different things. If, if th things that through the chair, if you do look at that appendix there, which is the, is the picture, the diagram showing the group budget areas down the left hand side, and as you referred to, economic growth and visitor economy is a group of activities that were identified. There are then moving away from there across to the right, there are three boxes, which are the component pieces that make up that group. We're tackling the first solid box, the next two dotted boxes would follow. Ah, uh, okay. So it's, it's the, a the subset. Very, sorry, I think it's very faint. And uh, okay. I'll so why that. why not the other why not the other two? Look, uh, through the chair, this is simply a case of actually putting in what is placed as a manageable workload. Um, and it was all of these are going to be the, the notion of why you've got this page in front of you is to show that it is a, it's a rolling program moving our way through all those groups of activities and the components that make them up. And we've just picked those four based on the, <coughs> on the priorities that we've actually set within the report. Okay, not I'll that the others will be missed, it's I'll just they'll, they'll have their, their time. Thank you. Now, in your paper, you, you say that this review uh, covers how an entity might be governed. That includes options for governance as well, according to the legislation. Y yeah, and that, that's uh, through the chair, that's the governance in the context of, is it CCOs, is it alliancing, is it um, di different arrangements to, to, to govern that service? So the review of the three waters would explore options for governance of the three waters. Yes. That's good. And one thing I, I noticed, I was reading a soldier paper last night. It had a section that said local authorities are required to complete their all their reviews by August 17. Yes. Not according to attachment C for us. Um, yeah, so what the legislation says is, yeah, the initial round of reviews to be completed by 1st of August, 17, and then at least on a six-year basis, rolling program, continuing these reviews. At least every six years, every service should be reviewed again. Fundamentally, this is, this is focusing in on the second round. The first round has happened in a variety of places. It's CCO reviews, it's ICT reviews. There's component pieces that happened over the last six years, in effect. Um, this is really picking up on the fact that even though they may not have technically met every requirement of 17A, is it practical to undertake a full-fledged 17A review between now and August? No. A, a review of sorts will be undertaken that we can actually show what we have achieved in, the, in the intent, but this is the solid program now going forward after that to make sure that we can actually show a, a full-scale, complete review process. So we would not satisfy the legislation in August 17 the Mayor's initiative sets us on yep. the track to doing that. And, and talking to other councils around the country, many of them are in a similar situation. What they're doing is they are picking the, the, um, the services most appropriate to try and get done within the time frame allowed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. On the paper. Oh, good, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a matter of clarification, really. I mean, uh, I've got it all pretty straightforward. It's uh, what we're doing in the review, uh, that it's four in the beginning. Um, number of eight that's been proposed there over a 12 month period. There's the political oversight group which I appreciate uh, being uh, put into the resolution for the recommendation. What I can't quite work out is uh, when I look at the table for appointment of the review panel and I'm not sure whether that's a singular review panel or more than, or there might be more than one because of more categories, 
but my question is who appoints the review panel? Because when I look at B and C, um, they're somewhat different. So I had assumed, uh, and that's why I'm seeking clarification now, that it was potentially could be C that appoints the review panel or panels, uh, but now I'm not sure. So could someone clarify that? 